when it started, they were just kids. The very first Supercross race, the 1972 Super Bowl of Motocross at the Los Angeles Coliseum, was won by a 16-year-old named Marty Trice. In an instant, the sport of motocross, invented in Europe, imported to America, had been transformed completely. Supercross was an American invention, and American racers were about to take flight. That first race led to a full Supercross series, with stars like Pierre Carsmakers, Jimmy Ellis, and Jam and Jimmy Weiner. But for Supercross to rocket to the stratosphere, it needed a superstar, and one was coming with Hurricane Force. Bob Hurricane Hanna shocked the world with a no-holds-barred attitude and three straight Supercross championships from 1977 through 1979. Then, a freak water skiing accident left Hanna with a shattered leg just as a new decade dawned. In came the super training era, perhaps the most competitive in the history of Supercross. Stars like Mike Too Tall Bell, Mark the Bomber Barnett, The O Show Johnny O'Mara, Ron the Machine Lachine, Donnie Holeshot Hansen, and David the Little Professor Bailey traded paint each week. The riders were stronger, the tracks gnarlier, the bikes better, the sport nearly unrecognizable from where it was a decade earlier. Then, Ricky Johnson and Jeff Ward formed the next great rivalry, with Johnson driving the sport as a media and spotlight-ready superstar until an injury ended his run while on top in 1989. By now, Supercross, once dominated by Californians, had branched out. Jeff Stanton, a hard-working farmer from Michigan, battled a French interloper named Jean-Michel Bale. Few believed a foreign rider could succeed at this American game, but Bale was a special talent. Soon, though, came the most impressive talent of all. Jeremy McGrath was nicknamed Showtime even as an amateur, and his new age style took the sport to new heights once he turned pro. He would retire as the all-time leader in Supercross titles and race wins, now known simply as the King of Supercross. For McGrath's greatest rival, more domination only meant more determination. And Jeff Emig ended McGrath's attempt at the only perfect season in Supercross history with a late season triumph in 1996. He bridged that confidence into the 1997 title, finally dethroning McGrath and proving that a strong inner belief can help defy the odds. McGrath would answer back with three straight titles. It was going to take someone special to finally end his run for good. It was impossible to beat McGrath with skill, so Ricky Carmichael did it with grit. Carmichael overwhelmed the competition and then faced a series of challengers like Chad Reed, an Australian who grew up molding himself in the style of McGrath. And then came James Stewart, who broke down barriers with next level speed and skill. Today's Monster Energy Supercross champion is Ryan Villapoto who carries many of the same qualities of Carmichael. His rival, a fellow Ryan, dungy, quiet, calm, focused, and determined. The next generation, too, carries cues from the past, like Justin Barsha's Bob Hanna-like aggression, Eli Tomac's commitment, reminiscent of the super training era, and Ken Roxon carrying the flag for global representation. Times change but many things in Supercross do not. They will all start out as kids, but some will leave as legends and heroes.